What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we're going to set up Visual Studio Code for React projects. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel through Patreon where you can get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues, where other developers will help you out. If you are interested, the link will be in the description down below. In the React tutorial, we're going to use Visual Studio Code since it's free and it's super easy to add extensions to it to make your experience a lot better. Now, as you can see, I'm on a Mac right now and I won't be creating a video on how you could set up Visual Studio Code on a Windows because honestly, it's the same software system, but the buttons might be located at other places. I'm currently in my browser on code.visualstudio.com, which will be the official website of Visual Studio Code. You will see that I got a call to action button right here on my landing screen called the Download Mac Universal. This button would change based on the operating system that you've got. If you have Windows, it will probably say something along the lines of download for Windows. Once you click on download, make sure that you install it and I'll see you back once it's done. I've got it installed and I won't delete my Visual Studio code and install it again because there's actually no point because the main point is the extensions. My interface probably looks a bit fancier than yours, but that can be changed with something which is called an extension. With an extension, you can simply add stuff like languages, debuggers, and tools that will support your development flow. So first things first, let's install an extension that will change the interface of our editor. Now, when you want to install an extension, you need to access the extension market. And this can be done in the sidebar, right here with the four dots. If we click on it and make it a little bit bigger, you will probably see some extensions that I have installed and you don't have, which is all right because I'm working with other projects as well. The first extension that we're going to install is called Community Material Team. And I've already got it installed. It's the first one. It's created by Equin Yusokyo and it has quite some downloads. Now, let me uninstall it. Click on Install. All right, and you can see that we can select the color theme. And the one I like is Community Material Pale Night High Contrast, which is actually the one that I just had. Now let's focus on some React related extensions. The second extension is a very important one, which is called ES7. And it's the first one. It's created by, that's actually a pretty difficult name. And it has 3.7 million downloads. I want to shout out him. Here you go, but I can't pronounce your name, sorry. I think that this is actually one of those extensions that almost everyone uses that works with React because it allows you to generate syntax and code snippets, not only for React, but also for Redux, GraphQL, and React Native. While installing it, so let's click on install, let's scroll down and see what's up with the application. Now right here, you'll see a ton of shortcuts that you can perform when you're creating something in React. Now, this seems difficult in the beginning to memorize them all, but once you get to know the most important ones or the ones that you use quite a lot, you'll be loving it. Let's actually test it out. Let's navigate to the Explorer in the top left. Inside our source folder, create a new file called test.js. Now, let me zoom in. What we can do right here is basically say IMR, and you can see that the import React has been pulled in. Hit enter, and it has already imported React from React. I'm not going over the syntax because that's something we could do in a later stage of this course. But we can also say IMCRP. Hit enter, which will import React components from React, and it also imports the prop types. Right now, we're importing files from the node underscore modules folder. But this can be done automatically as well with the following extension. So let's go to our market explorer and right here, let's search for auto import. It's the first one. Let's install it. And as the name implies, this extension allows you to automatically complete imports from the node underscore modules. If we navigate back to our test, now let's remove everything that we got and let's say import react, hit enter. And it will understand that we want to import react from the node underscore modules react. Now let's do another one. Let's say import react, whoops, DOM, hit enter, and it's importing react from react DOM. 
Whether you're working with Tailwind, CSS, HTML, or PHP files, file size matters. There is an extension available that you have seen right here, which will basically import the package in your code editor, but it would also displace the size. By looking at the size of a package that you might not have used before, you can basically tell if it's worth it. Now in the marketplace, let's search for import cost. It's the first one created by Wix. Let's install it. And this will basically do whatever I got right here, right? It is 7.2 kilobytes and gzipped it's 2.9. But as you can see, the React DOM is actually a pretty big one. It's 121 kilobytes and gzipped it's almost 40. Now the next extension is ESLint, which is an awesome extension for loosely typed languages. Let's install it. It lets you put guidelines over coding standards and help you to minimize errors. It will basically find errors in your code. We also have another extension, which is bracket pair colorizer. It's created by Coonrod and let's install it as well. Now JavaScript is full of brackets and curly braces. Once you work with multiple loops inside each other, it might be clustered to see which opening curly brace belongs to another. Therefore, we can simply add this extension, which will fix that for us. Let's test it out in code. Let's close it off. Let's remove the imports that we have and just follow along. Let's say const render list is equal to props. And in here, let's create a constant of cars is equal to BMW, Audi, and we have Mercedes. Then outside of our array, we could basically say, well, return brackets and you can see already they are purple an unordered list where we have brackets which is blue again cars.map add parentheses a yellow again so they're matching car pointer parentheses purple hit enter another list item right here of car but if you click on the parentheses that we have you can see that it's matching the bottom one if we click in front of the yellow one, you'll see that it's matching the map function. Now you might have seen icons in front of all the file names in my root directory. So let's add an extension for that as well. Let's say VS Code, great icons. It's the first one created by Emmanuel Biziat. I hope that I'm pronouncing your name right. Let's install it. If we then activate it, go to files, you'll see that we have new logos right here. And I actually find these way clearer than the one that Visual Studio Code added by default. Another fun extension that you can add is Code Spell Check. So let's search for Code Spell Checker, excuse me. It's created by Streetside Software. Install, close it off, and let's clear our, our test.js. In order to test it out, we need to create some text. So let's say const value with double L to make a typo of car, which is camel case. Right now, you will see a yellow line below of it. If we hover over it, you'll see that it's unknown and the value is not being used, which is all right because we're not doing anything with it. But you can also see that we can perform a quick fix. So let's click on it. And right here, you'll see different type of words that you can replace value with. So value, uh, valley, valgus, valium, but we want the first one, value. So let's click on it and it has replaced value with double L to value with one L. When working in JavaScript projects, you do really want to work with a live server. So let's install that one as well. I actually have it installed because I couldn't delete it, but it's the first one. It's created by Ritwick Day. So install it and once you have installed it, you will see a button right here and I'm not going to use my local server right now, but once you click on it, you'll be redirected to your local host. The next extension is one that you'll be using a lot and it's called Code Runner. So let's open it. Let's say Code Runner. It's the first one created by Jun Han. Install it. Close it off. Now let's remove our constant value. And right here, let's create a simple console dot log of this is my code runner working. Now, if we save it, you'll see a play button in the top right corner right here. Let's test it out. Let's click on it. 
right here, you can see that it has printed out, this is my code runner working. What this will do is running your code inside the terminal instead of inside of a window where you need to inspect the page. Now the last extension that we're going to add is a pretty important one, which is HTML snippets. Install it. It's created by Mohammed Abu Said, And this extension is actually one I already expect you to have. It will basically allow you to create HTML tags by writing down the tag name and hit tab to auto complete it. Now this does not work in a .js file. So let's go to our explorer, open the index.html in our public and right below our div root, let's say div, hit tab, it auto completed it. H1, hit tab, auto completed it. We don't need it, so let's remove it. This was it for this video where we went over some necessary and extra extensions to get the most out of your React experience in Visual Studio Code. In the next video, we're going to dive into six must-know JavaScript topics before learning React. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.